Skiing in Utah this year, should you go epic or should you go icon? That's what I'm talking about in today's video. My name is Nicole Battle, and I'm a local real estate agent in Park City, Utah with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. If you're new to my channel, I help you decide if Park City is the right place for you to land. What are the benefits of the Icon Pass? What are the benefits of the Epic Pass? Who is it best for? And what are the pros and cons of each? If you're skiing more than 10 days this year, then it would be silly for you not to buy a season pass or one of these two passes because a day ticket to Deer Valley is $209. So just skiing four to six days pays for your pass itself. Let's talk about the Epic Pass. The Epic Pass is owned by Vail Resorts and it launched in 2008 and it only included Vail, Beaver Creek, Keystone and Breckenridge at the time. And since then, Vail has been on an acquisition frenzy. Having the complete Epic Pass now gets you access to over 20 Vail owned resorts. Here in Utah, that only gets you access to Park City Mountain Resort. And if you're unfamiliar with Park City Mountain Resort, it is now combined with what used to be called the Canyons Resort. And for the people back in the day, that used to be Park West. It gets you access to over 7,300 skiable acres, and it is not the largest ski area in Utah anymore because Powder Mountain has trumped them. It also gets you access to Snow Basin, and I believe you get four to seven days there, depending on if you have the full Epic Pass or just the local pass. So who is the Epic Pass for? It is for families, families with young kids, world travelers, mid-easterners, east coasters who like to travel and take an occasional ski trip every year out west. If you buy the Epic Pass early enough, it's about $969 and they do stop selling these. So unfortunately, you can't buy an Epic Pass anymore. They stop selling them around the first or second week of December. So what are the pros of this pass? Well, if you like to ski Colorado and you go out to Colorado a lot, you have tons of resorts to choose from out there. In Utah, you only have Park City really and a few days at Snow Basin. When I first bought this pass, I loved it because I used to take tons of trips out to Colorado. So what are the cons of the Epic Pass? Crowds, lots of families, tons of tourists. It's very crowded. The lift lines are insane. I hear horror stories at Vail. Park City is getting pretty bad too, but they do have ways around it. If you download the Epic Mix app, you can actually see how long the lift line is at each lift. And if you're really strategic, avoid the lift lines that are long. That's what I used to do. Another con is that if you have the Epic Pass and you're skiing mostly Utah, well, Park City doesn't get nearly as much snow as the Cottonwood Canyons. You get about half as much snow. Parking fills up by 9 a.m. and these people are skiing all day long. You used to be able to go up at 10, go up at 11 and still find parking. And the days of that are over. These are families, these are tourists, these are out of towners and the parking lot fills up by nine and it stays full pretty much all day long. Park City Mountain Village, which is in town, is definitely a lot more popular. Sometimes you can sneak in a spot around noon if you go to the Canyons Resort. It has some more locals that ride there, but your best bet if you're getting up late is to just take transit. What is the Icon Pass? Well, the Icon Pass gets you access to unlimited skiing at Solitude Mountain Resort, which is in Big Cottonwood Canyon, you also get five to seven days at Brighton, Deer Valley, and Snowbird and Alta Share. That's a pretty great deal. And I think that the Icon Pass is best for real skiers. If you love to ski deep powder, if you love more local hills, if you're a van dwelling ski bum and you want to have access to some really iconic destinations, then the Icon Pass is for you. Solitude Mountain in Utah is a complete powder paradise. Back in the day, nobody used to care about it. And that's why it was called Solitude because you could ski all day long and have fresh tracks all to yourself. Now it has been acquired by the Altera company, which also owns Deer Valley. One of the big name ski resorts that you get access to if you have the Icon Pass is Squaw Alpine Meadows in Tahoe, Crystal Mountain in Washington, Steamboat Colorado, and some other partner properties such as Jackson Hole, 
Big Sky Montana, and Aspen, Colorado. You also get additional benefits on lodging and food. The Icon Pass for the full Icon Pass runs you about $1,049, while the Icon Base Pass is only $749. So again, if you're okay, with having blackout dates and only having five days at each of the Utah resorts as opposed to seven, then the Icon Pass might be for you. So the pros of the Icon Pass is that you're actually getting access to five Utah resorts as opposed to just one with four days of skiing at another. And I think that's pretty incredible. You could rack up 15 to 21 extra days because of the days you, you get when you have the Icon Pass to go ski Brighton, Snowbird or Deer Valley. A huge perk of the Icon Pass in my mind is that if you love to ski powder, this pass is for you because Snowbird is home to the steep and deep. And also something to think about is that at Brighton, it's called the Premium Pass and at Snowbird, it's called the Supreme Pass. And basically you're getting a whole entire season pass to Brighton or Snowbird plus an Icon Base Pass. So you'd get unlimited riding at Brighton, unlimited riding at Solitude or vice versa, plus the five days at all the other Utah resorts that are included in the Icon Pass. Brighton is a really fun area. It's definitely snowboarder heavy, has really good local vibes, very local crowd. Solitude has a very local crowd, so does Snowbird and Alta. Park City is a lot more touristy and a lot more amenity heavy. The pros of this pass are that you get access to the Cottonwood Canyons, which get twice as much snow as Park City does. And the cons are is that we live in the Wasatch Mountains now and it's becoming Was Angeles. And if you wanna know anything about that, the Uinta Brewing Company made a beer on it. So it's not, it's not a thing we have tons of people moving here and it's just becoming really crowded and our population is growing and it's causing a lot of traffic problems. And if you're going to ride on a powder day and you're stuck on Wasatch Boulevard, the traffic sucks and getting into the canyons can be really sketchy. And so they're requiring things such as traction laws and they really want people to, to take transit. And if you get an Icon Pass, it's a lot more local riders. So if you get up late one day and you're going to Solitude and they say that the parking lot is full, you can actually drive around and find five or six spots that are open by 11 because the morning rippers are just going up. They're getting there at eight. They're taking a few, they're skiing for two hours and then they're leaving for the day. And at Park City, you don't have that. That's also depending on how good the conditions are. And we have a really, we have no snow in Utah this year, very low base, very low tide. So I assume that would be different in a different year if we had better conditions. Make sure you download the full Utah ski directory because every ski resort is different. Some resorts are requiring reservations. Some resorts are requiring parking reservations and every resort has different operating procedures. So it's really helpful and hang on to it, save the link, and it helps you really navigate your skiing in Utah this year.